There you go. Um, Tonight. Hello, hello to everybody. You will give us uh, please uh, some uh, minutes to have more people join in. And then we will officially start. As you see, the meeting is automatically recorded. So feel free to uh, exit. <laughs> Should you have any objection on that, since we cannot do otherwise, this is a standard policy for our webinars to be recorded. Uh, but uh, in case uh, you feel differently, please uh, uh, raise your hand uh, or uh, send us a message on the chat. I think in one more minute and then we will start. Right, so I think it's time to start. Um, thank you for being with us today. This is another session of, uh, of the webinar series that uh, the Hellenic Development Bank is hosting uh, on its uh, networking platform InnoAgora, which is hosted uh, by the uh, platform of uh, the French Development Bank, uh, BPI. And uh, we urge you to um, to respond to us should you have any queries on uh, on the sequence of the webinar through the chat uh, or raise your hand uh, and we will follow uh, dedicating uh, a specific time frame for questions and answer by the end of uh, the presentation. We have uh, 
um, the honor and uh, the great opportunity to have with us uh, Panos Sevdalisa, who is a policy officer on uh, the European Innovation Council on the Directorate for Research and Innovation. And we did have some exciting news very recently announced by the restructuring, in a sense, of the Commission of the Commissioner's mandate uh, towards innovation and research by appointing uh, um, a new um, um, uh, Commissioner for the Innovation and Research by also changing the focus of the um, of the, um, let's say the Council towards uh, um, disruptive innovation and deep te technology by placing this priority on the spot, um, targeting EIC more to the Commissioner's extroversion, using it as the main tool. So that's why we invited Mr. Sedelis to inform us on uh, EIC, what it's all about, uh, and uh, dedicate uh, his time and effort to enlighten us uh, on uh, the tools that we can use. Um, and uh, yes, Mr. Sedalis, the floor is yours. Thank you for being with us. The pleasure is mine, Mr. Papagir, you, and thank you very much for the invitation and, of course, the initiative uh, the Hellenic Development Bank to, uh, took to inform uh, the Greek audience about uh, the European Innovation Council. Uh, feel free to interrupt me, Mr. Papayur, you from or anyone else from the organization team, should you consider that we can uh, we can turn to Greek at any moment. Um, so first of all, um, except the, the good uh, weather that I can bring you from Brussels, which I can uh, I can tell you it's not something that you will see very often here. We have indeed, as, as uh, was mentioned, uh, the late news uh, about the new college and uh, the commissioners will now go to the process of the hearings and the preparation for the hearings in front of the European Parliament. Um, very interesting news for innovation and research uh, in this new mandate. Um, which, uh, if we can give it a minute to mention, um, it is worth to to flag the impact of Draghi's report the previous with one one and a half week ago, uh, and this um, one hundred eighty degrees turn towards competitiveness that is uh, perceived essential for for Europe from now on. Um, this is clearly depicted on the mandate of the new commissioner for innovation and research, or in fact, sees nowadays it will be called startup innovation and research. So it's the first time that the commissioner takes this kind of title. Um, and um, of course, you can see how much is, this is affected by the need of Europe to turn into competitive technologies, which will ensure that we will not lag behind our competitors, ac competitors across uh, the globe. Uh, it seems that research, the the global, uh, the globally recognized European research of the highest level, will not suffice anymore. And it seems that we need to turn a page uh, and make um, a European market and European companies uh, one step more competitive uh, in the global market. So with that being said, I will uh, turn to the European Innovation Council, which is the reason I'm here uh, to discuss about it as I'm the coordinator of the work program in the Directory General for Research and Innovation. Um, this work program is a part of an entire framework program, which is called Horizon Europe. For those of you not familiar with that, think that the Commission is creating framework programs which work for us for uh, allocating money for us for the entire European economy every seven years. So Horizon Europe is the framework program which works from 2021 to 2027, uh, the ninth framework program since the development of the Union. Uh, and it allocates 100, in fact, 95.5 billion euros on uh, research and innovation. Uh, and with the additions of the next generation EU, uh, we are reaching 100 billion euros for uh, research and innovation. Um, the pillars, the different pillars that you see have to do with the orientation that each program has, starting from the first pillar, which is about research and science. 
Uh, some of you might have know, uh, identified there the Marie Skodowska Curie work program, uh, very important support, or the European Research Council, very important support to researchers, also in Greece. Um, the second pillar deals mostly with uh, the challenges that we are facing. You can see their health, uh, you can see civil security for society and so on. There you can see programs which are focusing specifically on them. And then on the third pillar, that one of Innovative Europe, you will see a kind of innovation of the programs we know with uh, European Innovation Council, which didn't exist in the past, um, that we're going to talk about. So this is a bit to give you a map of uh, how things are uh, look like in the programming of the Commission. What's the EIC? The European Innovation Council is a work program, as I said, for the period of 21-27, with a budget of 10 billion euros, which are allocated uh, in this seven years period. It, it creates a kind of um, travel, it travels together with the innovator from the early stages of the technology and research until the moment of deployment and uh, the moment of um, uh, market-ready company. Uh, it constitutes the last, the larger uh, deep tech and innovate, innovator and investor in Europe right now. Even uh, PitchBook has identified um, uh, EIC as the, the the second investor right now in Europe. And of course, it tries to create uh, synergies with every available program across the the union and the member states, but also inside. The, the different programs of the union. Um, you see that every year our budget is uh, fluctuating between uh, one and a half billion euros, with the latest uh, one now in 2024 around 1.2 billion euros allocated for this purpose. And uh, the, the decrease that you can notify, uh, that you can note, um, derives from the fact of the urgencies that the, 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 the Union had to deal with um, in the previous period, including uh, the war in Ukraine. Um, if I could give you a very, very nicely animated um, picture of um, the European Innovation Council, it will be, it will be like that. Uh, you can see in front of your screen three main funding schemes, starting from the left down, the Pathfinder, on the right, the Transition and the Accelerator. Uh, and these three funding schemes, which are for different recipients, different kind of recipients, are also supported by the Business Accelerator services, because we perceive that just giving money to, to beneficiaries does not suffice for them to, to take it to the next step, which is also uh, the big challenge for, for us in the European market. Uh, and it also includes prices because no matter what we're doing, it's super important to showcase the successful cases across Europe in order to imitate them, in order to get inspired. But also the seal of excellence, because as you saw, no matter what we're doing, we have a specific budget uh, and uh, competition is fierce. But we can already tell you that there are some researchers, innovators, some companies out there, which although they cannot be funded by us, they are meeting the highest level of uh, capacity and possibilities for, for, for the markets or the national markets. And the seal of excellence uh, certifies that and they make the, it makes them eligible for other sources of funding. I will talk to you about that later. I want to go, um, I want to take you with me in a kind of um, uh, analysis of the, the different schemes. Um, and I will go try to go quickly uh, through that because uh, I guess you're a diverse audience. So you might have companies around us. We, can, we might have also researchers and innovators. So here you see the three different um, uh, schemes and their uh, budgets. What you see as dates uh, is not an application date, it's a, a cutoff date. What we do is that we have almost constantly open applications, but then we set a uh, cutoff date, namely dates that we will bunch all the applications that we receive and we will start evaluating them. 
Uh, so just yesterday, we you see that we closed the transition call. Um, we still have for the Pathfinder challenges until the 16th of October and the 3rd of October for the accelerator. Let's go now and see what each scheme is uh, dealing with. So the Pathfinder goes on the scientific basis. I told you that we we are doing uh, we are doing a kind of journey together with the innovator from the early stages to the later stages, and the Pathfinder is for definitely for the earliest stages. Cutting edge technology um, with breakthrough and disruptive uh, character that could benefit Europe. That's where you start from from in the Pathfinder and. We have two ways to do that. We have a call which we call open and a call which is referring to challenges. Open call is anything that is at that level, is eligible, and regardless the kind of topic that it can have. Is it deep tech? Fine. Is it on AI? You can apply in the open. Is it on? Um, uh, is it something related to quantum, to space? You, then you can apply to the open call no matter what specific one quality you are bringing in your proposal, any kind of field. On the other hand, challenges is more specific. We are taking on board what's happening across Europe and the needs that we are, we have to identify. We create calls that are trying to solve the specific needs and it's here are changing. So no, whatever I will say from now on from the Pathfinder for the Pathfinder call applies to both open and challenges. Um, as I said, Someone can apply and is a good idea to apply if needs support in a low, lower technology readiness level. As Pathfinder intends to bring a, a scientist, a researcher to, up to the level of the proof of principle, namely to show that the technology that is developed, the research that is developed, can have um, results and uh, sustainable results in uh, the laboratory. We are not referring to single entities here. We expect consortia. And the reason why is that because research uh, has been acknowledged that across Europe research is taking place uh, between different variant teams across Europe, across um, different member states, which is something we try also from our side to preserve. And you see the example of universities, research organization, SMEs. So these uh, different entities can constitute a very, very nice combination of uh, uh, researchers and consortia for um, uh, Pathfinder. And here you have a slide which is very staffed, quite overwhelming, but shows what kind of uh, expected uh, output we, ha we, ha we, 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 we see as uh, deriving from Pathfinder. Proof of principle, as I said, proof that your idea is functioning in the lab. Uh, of course, you can imagine, but by doing that, by receiving this kind of uh, uh, very uh, well acknowledged funding from the EIC, top level uh, publications is also part of it. Intellectual property, uh, the feeling and um, the high value of the intellectual property which will be produced by the Pathfinder project. But of course, we have to take into consideration some also social aspects like um, the future leaders of Europe who will embark on this journey and uh, definitely the gender balance and empowering female researchers. Um, in terms of uh, time, uh, for those of you that might be among us and uh, would be interested to participate and apply, be aware that no matter what you're doing and whatever you want to apply to in the European Commission programs, funding and tender uh, portal is, is the place to go. It's a place that you can look for whatever is more appropriate for you and so you can start your research from that and look for guidance within that. Every has a specific... Panet, yes, yes. Quick, quick question. Uh, yeah. uh, who you would advise to sit with us and write the proposals? Is it something that uh, is easily to be done by any one of us who has at least uh, the notion of how to fill in uh, his story? Uh, or do you need an expert to advise you to submit? Well, definitely from our side, we are not advising for recruiting consultants. Uh, uh, 
So, uh, and we know that in many instances, uh, researchers feel hesitant in creating this kind of application on their own, both because of the fact that they might need to devote a lot of time to that. Uh, so given that, may we have prepared the, and published the code of conduct for consultants because uh, we understand that many have this kind of need. But on the other hand, I don't perceive that having done this kind of research, knowing your project uh, well, does not give you the capacity to elaborate in the application. So I'm very much in favor um, of um, applying yourselves and of course ask for the help from the national contact point that every country member state has and there it's their job to uh, inform you about that. In Greece, you can refer to Praxis Network. Yeah, exactly. That. Right. Thank you. Let's go ahead. So Thank you. You, you see in the slide the different timelines for that. So door to door, uh, let's call it like that. You can expect uh, funding in uh, eight months and the funding can go. It has a, a grant um uh, uh grand instance uh substance and goes up to four million um i, ha I have included uh, here uh, how the the, uh, the evaluation uh, and the funding is determined to give you a taste you see that we have two different evaluation procedures steps and so you will be assessed by an individual uh panel first and then it goes to an evaluation committee um, and concluding this Pathfinder analysis, you, I have included these uh, statistics to indicate to you um, the success rate, which uh, is different from open to challenges. You think that challenges also are more specific, so we have less applications comparing to, to open. And uh, um, you see a 7.5 and almost 11% success rate. Uh, and with that being said, I'm taking you now to the other funding scheme. This is the ESC transition. You can imagine already that we're going a step further from the technology readiness level. That's, let's say that we have supported so far the research and now we go to the next step. Uh, we want to take a product from um, uh, the laboratory and start bringing it towards the market. And this is what the, the transition is doing. Uh, so that's why you, you see that start preparing for more mature uh, matur maturation and uh, validation of your results. Um, here we are trying, you know, to address the kind of first questions that stem uh, from your mind when you see about that. It's not only about the prestigious program that gets, you get support with, but it's also about the next step that you can do by utilizing the transition. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that comparing to the Pathfinder that any, or the Accelerator that anyone can apply, Transition has um, a number of programs that someone has and needs to have as uh, previous support. So it's not completely open to everyone that hasn't received or never have received funding from the European Commission and the European Commission programs. And that's what the second column gives you, the kind of programs that you might have already get support from and that makes you eligible to apply to the transition. Uh, the grants, again, we have grants here, are lower uh, from comparing to the Pathfinder and go up to 2.5 million. Um, and for 2024, we had a budget of um, 94 million. I don't know, uh, Mr. Papayoriu, I see there is a question. I don't know if you want me to continue and please, put them at uh, the uh, end or uh, if you would uh, like me to take them, up to you. Uh, please, uh, Mr. Oh, Mr. 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 Theodoulou, please uh, put it on the chat and we'll you know, follow it on further. So continuing with the, the transition, thanks, for, thank you for that. Uh, so continuing with the transition in this slide, you see exactly what I mentioned. We take a technology from the proof of concept, a technology readiness level of three, uh, and we try to bring it towards developing its business plan. And trust me, um, until you get at that point, uh, there is a, a significant work to be done and a significant understanding to 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 help our innovators with. Uh, because you can imagine that many times uh, something that for someone is super important, in fact, it doesn't have the market uh, uh, um, potential that uh, is perceived. Um, I have included for you uh, some examples of the kind of uh, beneficiaries that you can find of the kind of consortia that you can find in the transition. Here we have some cases of mono beneficiaries comparing to the Pathfinder, which was only consortia. 
Um, but you see that uh, normally it's uh, two to four, two, two to five beneficiaries for the ESC transition. Uh, it's also important to have people, entities from different member states. All this information are both in the work program, in the website, in the funding and tenders portal. So we guide you step by step. If you decide to go through this uh, application process, we guide you step by step on uh, what are the eligibility conditions. Um, here you see the, um, the kind of cycle of from application to um, uh, reward. Again, everything starts from the EU funding and tender portal. So well, even if it's not the EIC, don't hesitate to join this kind of this kind of this uh, uh, website to look for EU funding. That's what it's for you there. Um, you see here that um, starting from that, we have the different evaluation phases with independent evaluators outside of the European Commission, experts in their fields and in the field of the application. Uh, which are expected to give feedback and uh, finalizing the feedback we lead to the grant agreement from our side. Uh, again here I wanted to show you the success rates which uh, you can see the 21-23 are higher than the Pathfinder. Of course in this context it plays a role that it's not widely open but you see a lot of participation also from already supported EU supported programs. Um, this is something that the next slides are something that I wanted to show you, especially to those who are at that, that kind of phase of developing a business or a project. What is what are those conditions which have intrigued us in supporting this project and cooperating with these innovators? One of the main goals uh, has to do with the team. We have seen some fantastic teams, some fantastic consortia in this context and very good cooperation. And of course, at the end of the day, it's also the novelty of the innovation. And we have to understand when we're doing disruptive innovation and when we're doing incremental innovation. Uh, it's very important to identify when something is brand new and it's about um, disrupting the way that we perceive the world uh, today. Um, one of the things that have done most of the applications being rejected is, as I mentioned before, the lack of understanding on the market competition. Um, for those of you who are coming also from a technical background as myself, from engineering, I think that it's many times you have been in a position to think that your idea is the best, and, and of course I don't doubt it, but uh, there is a difficulty in analyzing the market pro uh, properly and understanding the weaknesses and the existing competitors. Sometimes we are not that alone in the market as we want to perceive in terms of novelty of our idea. And this was also what has um, cut many applications in transition. And with that being said, I'm moving to the ACE Accelerator uh, in order to complete this journey with you, this innovation journey that we started a couple of minutes ago. Um, and let's see what we are looking for there. First of all, let me tell you, the ESC Accelerator is something completely different because so far I have talked to you about grants. So most of you will think that, OK, what's the novelty? You told us at the beginning that ESC is a novelty. You are giving grants as everyone else. I was skipping it for the end of four of you, and um, here it comes from, uh, for the ESC Accelerator. Now we're going to the startup phase. Uh, think of technology readiness level six. What does it mean? That you have completed five. So you have your business plan there, and you need someone to help you with the further deployment, reach specific technical milestones, uh, and of course, lead you to the final commercialization and bring your product to the market. Uh, so scaling up, I'm sure you're listening to that all in all, all the time, but this is what I just mentioned, is exactly the scaling up. And it's what many times you innovators and entrepreneurs are facing across the market because it's difficult to raise capital nowadays if you're in the scaling cap uh, uh, position because of the perceived risk. Uh, and this is something we want to, to close as a cap and to, uh, to dissolve completely. Um, of course, there's a scientific discovery and all this effort to crowd in private investor uh, or catalyze uh, private investment and bringing in, justifying that an idea, or as, as no matter how risky it is, uh, we can help it. Okay, you cannot raise money from uh, a bank or take a loan, but we are here to 
to fill this gap and uh, support you. Uh, so that's what we are looking for and now what we give to them. And here's the novelty. It's the first time that the commission is stepping in and accepted grants is giving equity. Realize that the commission becomes shareholder to European companies. What says that to the market? It says that we believe in them, that despite the risk, we perceive that their innovation, their technology uh, is going to change our lives to, of course, to the better, and we're going to support them. Um, so that's what the blended finance is about. But okay, of course, we cannot stick to that. We, we also use grant only to certain cases. And the reason is to reach certain milestones before we examine whether we are going to give them uh, also uh, equity. And we have cases of equity only. These are more specific uh, cases. Why? Because they have already received uh, support from um, other European programs. Uh, but now they are in the phase that they need an investor. They are highly risky according to the market perception. We are stepping in on that in order to catalyze and crowd in private investment. So that's how it, our, our funding mechanism looks like. And if we look into more detail, of course, the most interesting part of it, which is the blended finance, you see that we have a grant component, which can go up to uh, 2.5 million. This is because we acknowledge that uh, a startup might not have reached the technology readiness. Uh, its technology is not as mature to, to, to bring it directly to the market. And there we believe that the grant can help him or her reach uh, specific um, technology milestones. Um, and then we move on to the um, investment component, which can go from half a million to 15 million of equity. Uh, the commission is targeting to minority ownership. Um, the average is around 10%, but we can go up to 21 or um, in some instances 25%. And we are venture capitalists. We are uh, a European people's venture capitalist. So we give patient capital and we this means that the investment horizon goes to uh, seven to, until the exit goes to seven to ten uh, years on average, but we can go max to fifteen years. So how this how the the the, uh, the blend finance looked like, and uh, you can imagine that since I'm referring to startups, any single entity like a startup, a European startup, can apply. There is a specific limitation that we can go up to small mid caps, so up to four hundred below 400, 500 sorry, employees. And except of single companies, we also natural persons can apply um, coming from the member states or associated uh, countries. Um, EAC Accelerator has the same function or the, the same kind of structure as um, Pathfinder. You see the open and the challenges. It's exactly what I mentioned before during the Pathfinder open is for any kind of technology, which is, of course, on deep tech thematically, but it's on any field, whereas challenges are more uh, thematic are top down. You can see specific challenges, for example, uh, on um, quantum and uh, health sector um, or and this changes every year. Um, what I will show you from now on applies to both of them. Just to make that clear, I wanted to include something that shows you the, the application process. What someone needs to do um, in order to um, apply is start, of course, from having a good idea and realizing that uh, um, he or she has a story to tell. And this is where you do your short proposal. This short proposal has around uh, 10 pages, and it's up to 10 pages, actually, and uh, a three minutes pitch video. Think about it as, you know, I have an idea, I want to sell it, let me try that. Um, besides, if you're an entrepreneur, you need to be able to sell this kind of idea in order to get the essential funding at the stage you are. So that, that's also the sort of what the sort proposal is about. You prepare it, you submit it. Um, and then if you get the, the okay that your idea past the threshold, you start preparing your full proposal where you can become a bit more elaborative on what the idea is about, technical, uh, technical specifications, uh, you elaborate a bit more on the, the funding needs that you have, on any other co-investors that you might have attracted. Um, and as soon as you submit that and you are successful, you end up 
properly to a kind of jury, uh, specialized people uh, that uh, specialized in the area that you apply for, people who are going to assess your application, and this is the last stage of uh, becoming or not a beneficiary of the ASC accelerator. Um, this is a bit the timeline, at least for 2024. Um, it's the average that has applied also in the uh, previous years, and you will see them applying also in 2025, most probably. Uh, short proposals are continuously open. Uh, you can apply any time in the year, again, through the funding and tenders portal. Uh, and the feedback is estimated in four to six weeks. So it's one and a half to two months until you get your feedback that you can continue. Congratulations, you can continue and submit your full proposal. Now, in the case of the full proposal, please recall the dates that I have showed you at the beginning, and you see them also here on your screen, the cutoff date. You have, in order to consider your full proposal, you have to apply it um, before the cutoff dates that you see in front of you. Otherwise, you have to wait for the cutoff date of the new work program uh, in order to submit your full uh, proposal. And since you submit your sort proposal, you see, as I said, uh, it's 12 page uh, template, the slide deck and the three minute video. It goes through four experts. Um, we work on the basis of go, no go, not on uh, ranking. And as long as you get these uh, three goes, then you can go and submit your full proposal. Uh, as I said, you need four, we need four to six weeks to come to you on that. Uh, so at the point that you get this kind of go, you can start preparing your business plan. EIC is supporting you in this kind of process. This also um, is a response for you, Panagiotis, for what you mentioned before on the accelerator. Mm -hmm. um, the EIC through the business coaches and business acceleration services is supporting with specific courses and direct outreach uh, potential applicants or those who have passed the short proposal. And then before the cut of dates, you have to submit your full proposal. There is a question here. So we will apply now for the short proposal. We target the cutoff of 13th of March for the full proposal. Sorry, let me see. It. Uh, so if we apply now the short proposal, no, so if you apply now the short proposal, you need, as I said, four to six weeks to get your feedback. And let's say that you are, uh, you get a positive feedback, given that the cut of uh, for accelerator is on the 3rd of October, 2024, you have to wait for March, 2025, which will most probably be the month of the 2025 cut off. Now I was talking about 2024, because the 2025 is not still adopted. So. You will look for the um, uh, for submitting your final proposal with the new work program. Uh, I will. I see that there are some questions in the chat. I I'm, I think I will close uh, anytime soon, and I will go back to them one by one. If no, 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 don't worry, uh, Mr. Mr. Theodulu, Theo. Uh, if you do have a question, please pose it through the chat uh, in order not to interrupt Panagiotis. Uh, but certainly, you have the time after all to to continue asking. So please, Panagio, to go ahead. I will move on then a bit faster and try to uh, perhaps see how much I can uh, try to address all the questions. So here you have the full proposal process. Um, I included all of these just to familiarize yourself with how the process looks like. Um, in this case, we have three experts. All of them have to agree that your proposal uh, deserves a go. And as soon as you pass it, you go to the interviews. This is the jury phase that I mentioned before. Um, and uh, you see, we start from the interview, six juries in front of you. Uh, many times we have also a commission and European Investment Bank observers in front of you. Uh, you have to ask on technical and also financial questions in terms of the business that you want to develop, because keep in mind that now we're talking for a company, a startup in front of us. And hopefully as soon as you get the go, uh, we start the preparation of the grant agreement if you have requested blended finance and you start also negotiating with um, European Investment Bank about the investment. Um, one topic that I mentioned before at the beginning, actually, of my presentation is the seal of excellence. And this stems from the fact that our budget, no matter how high it looks, is limited. And um, I cannot tell you that out there, there are some fantastic ideas, which despite the fact that we want to support every single one of them, uh, we don't have the capacity. But what we can do is that 
to award this kind of seal of excellence. This seal of excellence is commonly acknowledged and uh, received by all the member states. And what it says is that you, the project that has it um, is way above average and is actually excellent. It meets all the criteria of the EIC, so meets all the criteria of this 10% of success rates that you saw, or even less in the accelerator case. Uh, but we don't have the capacity, the financial capacity to support it. But there are definitely a lot of um, other programs which are um, uh, open to seal of excellence uh, awardees, uh, including national programs. In Greece, for example, uh, we have the particular case of Erevno um, Kenotomo. Uh, I think it's also launched now by, or it was recently launched by the by the Ministry of uh, Development and Investments. Given the nature of the meeting, I also want, and uh, as the Hellenic Development Bank call for that, I wanted to talk to you about the fund. What's the fund? The fund is actually the mechanism that works behind the ESC accelerator in order to provide equity. And that's what makes us uh, the venture capitalist that I mentioned before. However, at the end of the day, the European Commission is a public institution. So in order to um, move things forward and make things work, we have an external fund manager. Uh, but this has no impact, of course, on the funding or on the selection processes which lands with the European Innovation Council and the European Commission. Uh, this gives you an idea about uh, the stakeholders, who, how uh, we cooperate in order to um, reach back to you. And um, you see the fund manager that I mentioned before, the European Investment Bank, which is our advisor on the financial part of the um, agreement, of the investment part of the agreement. As the European Commission, which has the final saying and uh, does the awards decision, and is mayor. Some of you might not know it is the agency, um, the executive agency, which deals with the technical part um, and uh, has to do with the deals with evaluation and the selection of proposals meeting the conditions that we set. A bit of number, some numbers to to justify why this kind of uh justify why EIC is uh, perceived so strong and the EIC fund is perceived so strong uh until the inception uh, and the pilot of 2021 we have uh made 521 proposals uh, being selected for equity this means 2.5 billion euros uh 440 for d of deals approved uh and up to now 250 investment agreements done Right now, after the, by the initial backlog um, we had by setting up this mechanism, you can imagine that every week we are setting up and we're closing an investment agreement. And this investment agreement uh, has leverage effect, an average leverage effect of 4.5, as you see. This means that for every one euro that we put, we managed to crowd in 4.5 euros from the private market. It's, it's quite... Um, it's quite uh, rewarding for us in any case, and that means that right now um, the valuation of the fund for this one billion that you see is around four billion euros in the European market. So it has a very significant leverage, and that's why it has been highlighted in the mandate of the new commissioner and from the president of the commission herself. Um, this here, this slide here actually repeats what I mentioned before. Uh, it's not only that we will step in on equity, but we will also support follow on investments to uh, our companies, patient capital, uh, minority ownership. And uh, we also want to provide uh, additional services to the companies because we don't stick also to, only to um, giving them the money, but also support them with the network and the approach of the investors. Um, in this slide, you can see the process uh, of the selection and the guidelines, uh, contribution of the European Investment Bank and the manager until the investment reaches the final recipient. Um, and um, I think I will skip that. It's what I just mentioned that we don't stay only in supporting uh, companies with money, but also with other actions from networking to uh, finding the appropriate investor to lead investment round. Closing, 
Uh, as European Innovation Council, as I said, we don't stay only when supporting beneficiaries with uh, money. We perceive that we need, we need to take a lot of action in addition. And this is something we do with the business acceleration services. You need uh, entrepreneurs need coaching, support in networking, uh, support in um, um, uh, the startup procedures. And this is something we do through different services, as you see here. Uh, in order to help them deploy their ideas. You see, for example, um, matchmaking events, uh, how many innovators are reaching out to us from, from our beneficiaries, uh, the ecosystem partners who join the network and the different meetings that we're trying to set up, we're setting up with different stakeholders. And of course, all the different kind of shareholders that serve this EAC community. I close a bit faster this uh, part, but um, I think that you got the message that the whole ecosystem has to support the effort for setting up the European Innovation Council. And with that, and back to you, Mr. Papagiorgio, thank you very much for your attention, everyone. Happy to address your questions. Oh, thank, thank you. Really interesting, you know, and in a quick look, uh, you gave us uh, the opportunity to see the, the width and breadth of the um, of EIC uh, in a nutshell. Uh, we do have uh, one question from Mr. Theodulu. I don't know if George, uh, can you please uh, open the mic for Mr. Theodulu if uh, he wishes to to pose his question beforehand before he, he did raise his hand. Um, you think is uh, possible, George, please? I can't find him. Theo Theodulu. Mr. Theodulu, uh, as soon as uh, you see your mic uh, being activated, please uh, go ahead. Mm. Shall I'm not I, sure that he's online. Shall I try to address Mrs. Uh, uh, Karayani's uh, question? Yes, and then we do have a question from uh, Mr. Chadilas. Okay, please go ahead. I, I took it from the top and I'll, I will go. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, let me do that like that. Uh, uh, okay, so how do you encourage green technologies and sustainable innovation? Um, the European Innovation Council has a clear thematic focus towards deep tech. Deep tech is the technology which stems from the, um, the breakthrough technology, which stems directly from uh, the laboratory. Um, we support green technology and sustainable innovation um, horizontally in this context. So, for example, you we, we might support um, a technology which deals with artificial intelligence and the main uh, effort is to um, support in green transition. We don't have this kind of limitation that um, uh, this kind of technology has to be specifically green, but we have many, many cases uh, thematic projects which uh, have as main um, uh, target to, to to contribute to the energy transition or the green solutions. I, I, I hope that um, you see my point on that. Of course, in addition to the European Innovation Council, Council why otherwise uh, the European Commission has more target, even more targeted, um, if you're looking for something like that, more targeted calls um, on pillar two that I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation. Uh, I answered the other one on the cutoff, which was from uh, Mr. Lavalas. Uh, from Mr. Tzadilas, I see, I hope I pronounced the name correctly. From the yes. start, it is obvious that some countries, including Greece, are not ready to compete with the most advanced, example, France, Germany, etc. Are you going to give us a better chance? Excellent question. I have heard that again. Very recently, I was um, in, um, I mean, before the summer break, I was in Greece and um, uh, I was struggling to convince people that Greece is not only about the exceptional research. And I can tell you that Pathfinder has many researchers supported from Greece, also participants from Greek uh, companies and uh, resources. Uh, but my main effort was to convince that the Greek companies can also be in the accelerator. I was trying to convince that in Greece we have entrepreneurship and we have very good, have very promising um, uh, startups. Um, I happen to be in a kind of negative kind of atmosphere by when I was saying that, but luckily the Greek market proved me wrong. And um, in the most recent results, two Greek companies 
will get blended finance from the European uh, Innovation Council and the ES Accelerator. This is uh, Solmeja and Argosem. Uh, imagine that so far there was only one company which ever managed to be in that uh, phase, uh, uh, which to get money from the accelerator. This was um, uh, the company of uh, Footprint. And all of a sudden we got two. I think this happened because of a very dedicated uh, try effort to uh, very targeted effort to expand and inform about the ASC in Greece. It's not a matter that you cannot or we cannot in Greece as well. We cannot compete with the Germans. It's a matter that we don't apply. If you see the statistics of Greece, we have in total applied. We have ten applications on the accelerator, and in total, I, we have three successful projects. We have the highest rate. I mean beneficiary to application across Europe, but we, we should definitely look after increasing the, um, the application rate. I really believe in the, what we can do and the, the, the possibility that we can create in Greece, but we have to focus and uh, have targeted information. I think that would be very helpful. At least that, that, that's what the results So, Without saying that France or Germany or Netherlands are not having many beneficiaries, I can tell you that they are applying they have many, many, many applications for that. Um, I'm, shall I continue, Mr. Papayer? You yes, is please, looking for yes, you. Please, yes, please, yes, please, yes, uh, please. Mr. Danias, Papayer, uh, looking at the has a pillar that supports projects that have a seal of excellence. Yes. So this way, you don't need to compete with Germany, France, and Netherlands as long as you submit a good proposal. Absolutely, but this mm -hmm. comes from um, Greek market money. So the seal of excellence you get bestows that you have an excellent product, accredits that you have an excellent project, and it's on the member state to say that they have this pool of money which will support this Erevno uh, uh, in particular in this context. Uh, please apply to me, and then you compete only with the companies in the in the Greek market. Absolutely, uh, and that's why it's an exceptional case. And I really hope that it will not only support research, but it will also support entrepreneurship in in Greece. Um, ah, there is an exchange with Mr. Tzadila, so I'm not mm -hmm. coming back to that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Podimatas, you mentioned the grant funding. How is uh, how AIC Accelerator program helps startups secure both equity and grant funding? Um, the applica it's the application. It depends on the needs of the applicant. So if the applicant wants uh, blended finance, namely grant and equity, they indicate it in their um, application. From our side, we, we support them in both processes. If they are beneficiaries, they will do the grant agreement procedure with us and sign the grant agreement that they need, uh, depending on the money they request. And then uh, as far as the term sheet is concerned for the investment, as far as the investment agreement is concerned, they will be in direct touch with uh, the investment officers from the European Investment Bank. Praxis Network can provide to you significant, as the national contact point can provide you all the relevant information as soon as you decide that you want to apply for that. and. Uh, they can give you all the step by step, the guidance that you need uh, and for free, of course, because uh, th that's the role. Um, continuing to uh, the next one. Um, the seal I of don't, excellence. Yeah. Yes, I don't I really. So the seal of excellence is relative to the other application or is it objective and independent? The seal of excellence means that you have met all the conditions, all the criteria. So for uh, Accelerator, we are assessing an application on the basis of excellence, impact, and perceived risk, which means that you are on top of the list. But then when you, we have the 60, 70 projects of companies that have below, uh, have above this kind of ranking, they have made uh, uh, fantastic results. We have to see one by one uh, what kind, how, many, how much money each company uh, demands. Uh, and when we start allocating the amounts, uh, it happens that some companies might end up without us being able to give uh, money because we don't have them in the budget. Uh, so it's uh, to, to answer your question with a, uh, more specifically, it's rel relative to the number of other excellent applications that might be above this already excellent application, which will get the, the seal of excellence. 
no, yeah, that was the last uh, question. Uh, we should not forget that uh, whichever company applies to EIC for any uh, of its programs and succeeds in getting um, the way through them. Um, and then, uh, I mean, even if they get the seal of excellence, but uh, even if they don't reach this level, uh, there will be a good opportunity and a great opportunity as a proof of uh, added value to the already existing financing system in any country that the banks will acknowledge this kind of uh, success and uh, they will be more reluctant in moving away from their standard rigid credit policy that refrains them from funding startups or early scale up companies because banks do care for the past and though startup companies don't have a past but they have only future and projects greek banks especially they don't finance projects they do finance past histories and future but not only future so uh, eic um, and but the performance within eic proves uh, uh, that the company does have uh, the potential to explicitly um, you know, provide this kind of risk-free or at least a limited risk calculation to the banks, um, which is not the truth. Okay, we don't want to bless EIC that uh, will be <laughs> the um, uh, you know the leverage to to move away from the rigid uh, credit, but still it is a sign of uh, of light um, on this rigid credit system. Um, we do know, especially though, that uh, the efforts of uh, EIC Scaling Club are performed especially to keep companies within Europe rather than uh, letting them uh, spread their wings to you know, the United States or to elsewhere. But uh, still, the examples that Mr. Sardalis brought to, to our table now um, do concern companies that at least did have the opportunity to either raise funds uh, on a certain level and above. So it's not for everybody, the ESC Scaling Club. Isn't the case, Mr. Sendalis? It's not for well, right small now, the startups. Set, the ESC Scaling Club is for startups, and we have requested from the member states to indicate to us the most promising startups, either being inside the ESC or not. Um, we have uh, we are about to announce the second cohort in specific thematics in Athens on the 21st and 22nd of October. Uh, and as you very correctly said, Mr. Babayeru, the effort is to um, the main target is to create uh, after that to, to have 10 unicorns, a leap mm -hmm. from the 120 companies to 10 unicorns, which means valuation of more than 1 billion euros. Um, and the ultimate goal at the end of the day is to create a framework that they can continue working within Europe because um, we are supporting them in order to make the next step for the European economy and uh, for the European countries rather than going outside. But for that, we need to create a fertile ground to do so. We as institutions, but also attract the investors. Um, the banks and uh, we started building on that and um, taking into consideration the leverage effects that we create, it seems that we try to convince them. BPI France, for example, mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. uh, co-invested with us in French companies many times. So it's very positive and um, that's why it, this all justifies the, the, um, the kind of momentum built around uh, EIC. Mm -hmm. And when we do talk about EIC, and tell me if I'm wrong, uh, we do talk about EIB. Because mm -hmm. the job has been done, you know, from EIB. So uh, again, it's a it's a great uh, privilege to have EIB scrutinizing our plans and giving the green light or the corrections to move on. So this is something that it is valuable in any company that wish to go forward. Well, um, European Investment Bank, as I said, EIB is the uh, investment advisor. Uh, the identification and the selection of the project, the promising technology uh, that can bring the difference in the European market is done by us. However, we need to a further assessment on the financial viability 
of uh, the company. And this is where AIB steps in. And of course, as a bank, it has also significant network of investors, uh, which uh, uh, are who are that are approached in order to step in, depending on the opportunity for uh, our ASC companies. So it's a great, without a doubt, co cooperation in this context. But um, I'm keeping that the, the selection of the companies and the identification of the companies still falls uh, within our uh, remits. Okay. But of course, uh, just to conclude with that, close with that, it increases significantly uh, the um, um, kind of uh, perception around the company that is supported by the um, European Commission and. Uh, uh, is uh, the financial due diligence is done by the EIB. This uh, is uh, this gives a very good credit for going outside to the market, uh, and, and especially when you do seek funds and investors. Exactly, exactly. it changes a, a lot the perception. And we have seen many times that venture capitalists have asked. I mean, they say that as soon as one company gets the funding from EAC, they are willing to step in as well. Uh, or vice versa, but we have seen both uh, cases, and it makes sense because for them we are doing uh, we are doing the job. We are here to do the job. Besides, we are here to do the job, and this is very well received by the market. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, we're here to accept more questions, uh, so please feel free to hit us through the chat or raise your hands. Uh, if you allow me, uh, Mr. Babayo, as we are closing, and just to uh, say a, a final word, a final suggestion uh, towards uh, your, the participants of the meeting. Um, I would urge all of you to consider applying or being in the process of applying why the SX, I have seen that the SX accelerator, the steps that it follows when you need to justify that your company creates uh, a project, a product, a technology or a service. And uh, the, the, the fact that it helps you start considering this kind of business plan that you will have behind it, even if you will never get the funding of the EAC, it will be the first step for you to start thinking with the market, uh, about the market reality and the market prospect of your uh, company, and will be really significant for you, no matter who you will approach in order to raise funding. Um, even if that's the EIC, even if that's another European Commission funded product, pro program, if it's going to be another product like uh, venture debt, which can also be an option depending on the needs of your company. So um, going back to the fact that we are compete with, we're competing with very big markets across Europe, keep in your mind that um, we need to expose ourselves uh, uh, as well to this uh, huge competition. It's not that we are lacking the ideas or the good companies out there, it's that we are lacking the confidence to compete in this uh, European, let's say, framework. Uh, and I'm telling you that um, with the most recent results that we got, I'm very confident that uh, we have more and more to give and more and more to take from that and showcase. Yeah. Yeah, great. Right, so um, we don't see any other questions, so um, it would be great to say um, a very big thank you, Panayotis, for your time and effort and the preparation. And uh, be sure that uh, we will air this uh, uh, recording to uh, um, network uh, and it will be on the Inagora and uh, it will be a great opportunity to have you again hosted here. Um, anybody who have any questions, Always please feel to send us mails uh, and uh, we have to say a big goodbye and very thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Panagio. This you. amazing presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Regards to uh, Ms. Panagopoulou. Pan okay. Thank you. We stay in touch. Bye. All right. Goodbye. Paul. Thank you.